knowing that, hey, we're going to need a vaccine uh, to help handle this pandemic, I would have made sure that I started having conversation with all the big pharmaceutical company globally and also at a local level, at Canadian level here. I, I'm not sure what the logic was there to do business exclusively first with a company that's in China where we don't have a very stable, a strong relationship with. At a local level, it's looking at who has the potential of retooling. Just like for PPE, for PPE when we were running out of PPE, and here's something that I'm big on as a business development person and project management in the past. You always do a postmortem. So we have gone through that exercise and through that challenge with PPE. There should have been a postmortem done to say lesson learned and what is it that we need to do moving forward for the vaccine. Unfortunately, that wasn't done. The only way for us to get back our economy is we need to make sure people are getting vaccinated. Nadia Reza Bright, our working woman, in addition to being an excellent member of parliament, she will certainly be a member of the cabinet and Conservative Party need that kind of superwoman. Uh, like Nadira said about the vaccine, uh, that's true that the first problem we have is the deal with Cancino. So I don't, we don't understand why. And when we asked the question to Anita and she dismissed the problem. She have the contract here with uh, AstraZeneca, I mean, with the UA, and they have a, mon- uh, a monthly basis deal. So they know each single month how many doses they will receive. But here it's uh, based on three months. So it's why we have that kind of problem. All the uh, procurement contracts about COVID-19 are keep it secret. So we can't, we, as the name of the company as well, we, we can, we have a example, a list of 25 companies. It's A, B, C, D, A, F, G, just the amount. Any, any other details, we don't have the name of the company, we don't have just the, the amount. And it's huge contracts talking about sometimes 100 million dollars and more. Of course, Nadira has great corporate experience and, uh, and her voice would be very important uh, in Ottawa, especially in a field like procurement, and especially when we are living in the world of a pandemic, uh, we need to ensure that uh, we are protecting the rights of Canadians, including the right to, to get vaccinated. So for the last five weeks, every single week, um, we're getting actually a reduction uh, in the supply that we than what we were originally promised. And the reduction is not uh, minor, it's significant. We are getting about 80% less supply for the last five weeks or for the five weeks that we are in now. So far, now being February the 6th, we have vaccinated 1 million. We are 37 million population in Canada. So 36 million more needs to be done. Between now and the end of September, we have 32 weeks. So if we want to meet that deadline, we need to inoculate roughly 1.12 million people per week. Michael asks, what is the current legal access of A, public, B, members of parliament, and C, members of parliament that are members of specific committees to the procurement contract? So how, how transparent are those procurement contracts as it stands right now? Hmm. Thank you for the question. And there's... Uh... Everything about contracts uh, uh, on PPE or on vaccines are kept secret. We can understand that a lot of information has to be kept secret because it's uh, businesses. But at the end of the day, we we need to have at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, how many vaccine are we expecting to, to receive? Uh, that kind of, like here in the uh, AstraZeneca with the UA, you know, European uh, countries. It's clear we don't have the numbers, I don't know, but we know it's monthly delivery. It's a, it's not a quarter. Healthcare capacity is a major issue. I'm, I'm a physician. I'm an anesthesiologist. I work at Shield Milk Partners. I've intubated COVID patients. I see COVID patients, uh, you know, on a daily basis, like Natalia does in in Brampton. We see this. We need healthcare capacity, uh, and so. And that's what's limiting. Because we don't have healthcare capacity, we have to shut down the economy. We have to shut down small businesses. We can't move around. We need to start investment and investigating those companies in Canada because this is not going to go away anytime soon. So now, the action is now to start um, 
discovery with these local Canadian biomanufacturing company about what it will take for them to ramp up 